Let's see if I can build from the coldest of takes up to a very hot take. Your game should be data driven. Don't hard code everything into your code base. Have data that feeds your game so that you have stuff that you can reuse and that you can build more content without having to write additional code to add additional content. Okay, not too controversial. So let's step it up one more notch. Included in data-driven should be design content. It's easy to see why you would use data for textures and models and animation, not hard coding, those sorts of things. But for design as well, you should have data that is feeding into your game for exactly the same reasons. So that you can have more missions, so that you can have conversations that aren't hard coded into the code. Still not too controversial. Okay, let's take it all the way up to the hottest of takes. Scripting is not data. What I mean by that is if you're building a data-driven game, your scripting language shouldn't form the basis for your data. That's not to say you shouldn't have a scripting language, you should. But if you are scripting everything, then what you've done is you've taken your game from hard coding everything in the code to hard coding everything into the scripting language. And you're no longer data driven. What you've done is you've just given this power from the programmers to the designers and you have all of the same problems that you started with. Indeed, you're kind of worse off. If you hard code everything in the code, well, the programmers have very well produced debuggers and easy ways to check for performance and things like bound checker to look for memory leaks. The designers don't have any of those things. Or if they have a debugger, it's certainly not as well featured as what you get with Visual Studio. Scripting languages do have their own advantages. They usually are more protected than raw, than raw code. You're probably not accidentally referencing a null pointer in your scripting. Or if you are, maybe your scripting is a little too close to the metal. So chances are it's much more robust. It's much harder to make the game crash with scripting than with code. Typically scripts are going to run significantly slower than your code as well. So while you may get some robustness as opposed to straight C++, you're trading sometimes fairly significant performance for that robustness. It's still not data because you're still hard coding things into individual scripts. When I'm talking about data, I'm talking about you have file formats and editors. You have an item file which has specific content that most items contain. So things like weight and price and if it's a weapon, how much damage it does and the kind of damage that it does. Because what you find is that in the case of RPGs at least, most of your content shares the same attributes. When you look at a spell in most fantasy RPGs, they have a fairly small set of conventions. The damaging spells have an area of effect and a range and an amount of damage and a kind of damage. Now you'll have some spells that have weird little idiosyncrasies like this is vampiric damage or this causes confusion. But even there, you can template out a lot of those effects. Confusion can be a status type as opposed to a one-off thing that you implement for the one confusing spell that you implemented. Rather than doing that, make it a kind of effect and then allow it to be accessed by more spells more easily. One of the things that being data-driven gives you is an easier ability to look through the mass of your data. If all of your ranges are hard-coded into individual scripts and you want to increase or decrease the ranges of your spells, then you're having to climb into 100, 200, 500 different script files to do this. If instead each of those is either an individual spell file or Alternatively, there's some sort of table of them. It gives you an easier way to consume this data because you're able to either parse those spell files automatically or just look at that table. Whereas if it's in scripting, it's much more difficult to pluck that data out of the content because it's 
could be anywhere. It could be inside of the targeting code of the individual spell. And maybe this points at one of the primary reasons why I'm against calling scripting data. Because you are implementing each individual thing on its own, you're not getting reuse. You're not gathering things together. It's much more difficult to have a consistency in the things that you are creating. Hopefully, if you're doing a lot of scripting, you have some sort of coding standard for your scripts and some sort of architectural guideline for your scripts. And you're doing something that looks like code review on your scripting. But what I've seen is that a lot of studios don't do that. They move all of this stuff from code where those things do exist into scripting. And along the way, they lose that process. They lose that rigor that they had in the code while things are moving into script. If scripts are the exception, then that might be okay because you're using scripting just to get things over the finish line. You're using them when all else fails, when the data isn't capable of doing the job. But if they become the norm, then you need to put processes in place to bring them up to the same expectations as the other parts of your code, because they are essentially code. Let me just reiterate that I'm not against having a scripting language. In fact, if you don't have a scripting language and you have designers, then one of two things is going to happen. Either all of this special case stuff is going to be put onto your programmers as a burden to your coding effort, which is probably not what you want, or a scripting language is going to come into being. As someone who is responsible for inflicting two different terrible scripting languages onto the designers of two separate project lines, BG script from the Infinity Engine, and then the truly horrific scripting language for, from Sonic Chronicles, if you're not careful, there's a good chance that something is going to essentially force itself into being to be used for that purpose, because there are going to be cases where you want something to provide that kind of logic. Don't have such high levels of zealotry against scripting that you end up forcing something even worse on your project. If you're making an RPG, you need a lot of these things. By scripting everything individually, you're preventing easy updates to the way systems work. If you wanna change the way that days works and you've scripted it all in one off, you have to go through and find every single instance that you've done that. Now you can take this too far. If you force everything to go through your item system completely and you have no outlet, then what you end up doing is you have to effectively move content back into the code when you have these special cases. If spells don't have the ability to run any sort of scripting, then when you move beyond the bounds of what your effect system is capable of doing, then what you have to do is essentially add a brand new effect. This is how the spells in BG work. The bulk of the spells are done through the spell editor and they have templated consistent behaviors. And then when something weird or different needed to happen, like vampiric damage or time stop, a brand new effect had to be created in order to handle that, which meant that most of the weird implementation of spells lived in the code, which is probably not what you want. What you probably want the ability to do for your spells and your weapons is most, and you should probably have a pretty hard rule of 90%, 95%, 99% of your spells work through the standard expectations of spells deliver effects to other targets. They can have area of effects, like you can write it down and it is fairly simple. And then also having the ability for them to run a script if they need to. But again, you don't want to be encouraging that because if you encourage that, all you're doing is you're moving your hard coding from the code into the scripting. I think what is quite common is that scripts start to become more and more commonplace over time at a studio. It makes some degree of sense because you start out 
everything is entirely within code. And then you realize that that's unsustainable. So you make some data formats and some editors, hopefully, and you move everything into data. But of course, there are exceptions. So then what you eventually do is you introduce the ability for scripting to be attached to these other data formats. But without some degree of rigor, what will happen over time is that more and more special cases will come into being as your designers make more and more special one-offs for your games. And we're going over many years, over many iterations of the game. And if you let this continue, eventually what you have is no data and everything is in individual one-off scripts. And in the process, what you've done is you've lost consistency. You've lost the ability to template things. And maybe that's one final reason why you should be using data over scripts as much as you can, because you want a certain readability to your RPG. If you're making a game that only has five weapons, then it makes a certain degree of sense that each of those is a really special snowflake and the sword and shield are fundamentally different than the way that a spear and shield work. And they just have their own special behavior. But if you're making a game where you have hundreds of weapons, where you have sword and mace and club and scimitar and what have you, and they are a whole bunch of different one-handed weapons, in that case, it doesn't make sense that you are doing them all as script because what you want is something that is templated not just for you, you as the developer, but also for the player. You want them to be able to understand what's going on relatively simply. So when they look at a one-handed weapon, they can figure out probably what it's going to do. Okay, it's a club that does bludgeoning damage, so I get what that means. And you've maybe bludgeoning damage is special, but I understand that it's a club that does bludgeoning damage. And then you can layer a couple of special things on top of it. It's also on fire and does fire damage, but it probably doesn't rip a hole in the space-time continuum because it's just a club and there are dozens of clubs and hundreds of other single one-handed weapons that you can use with a shield. So there's my hot take, which is be data-driven. We all agree, especially for RPGs. We all agree. Even for design, I think we all agree. Scripting is not data. Scripting is just another form of hard coding. Have it, but use it less than you expect you should. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you are interested in becoming a member, there's a link to that down in the description. We have merch now. I'm currently wearing 2DA Forever. If you're interested in picking up some merch, there's a shelf below this video where you can do that. If you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up because that tells YouTube that it's worth sharing around. So I'm pretty sure I probably pissed off some designers. Come fight with me in the comments and we can talk about why you're wrong. And I can convince you that scripting is in fact not data and is in fact another form of hard coding. Let's have fun. Um, let's keep it polite. I will see you again soon. Thank you.